Hi guys, it's Toy Tuesday, and today I'm going to be talking about, you guessed it, Cabbage Patch Kids. Now these are all my Cabbage Patch Kids from 1983 to the anniversary editions. Um, most of them are my originals. Some of them are um, replaced because I lost a few. Most of them have their shoes. I'm missing some shoes. I'm missing some um, pieces, but most of all, they're all intact. Um, so what to, today I'm going to um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the Cabbage Patch Kids. I'm going to show you how to identify tags, identify signatures, how to clean them, and I'll leave some links for resources on the YouTube web on the YouTube page. Um, so let's start off um, with the history. So back in I believe the 70s, there was a man named Xavier Roberts and he created what he called little people. And I'm gonna use an example because I don't have a little person. Um, but he created what he called little people. And little people were sort of the same as the Cabbage Patch Kids. The only difference is they didn't have plastic heads. They had cloth heads or fabric heads. And their shoes were, they were also all homemade. So they were, they were all original. Um, and their shoes were not formed to fit to their feet. Their feet still looked the same like this, but they were longer. They had longer shoes, almost like baby shoes. Um, so, and they were, and they were also a little longer. And Xavier Roberts decided to make these. He created a company called Appalachian Artworks, and he traveled to different craft fairs selling these, selling these dolls. And people just really loved them. He also did the same thing that the dolls have now. He he signed the butt of each doll with his signature, and those are those were hand signatured. Um, and you could also adopt them as well. I think people liked that. And I have a set of adoption papers. I'll show you what those look like for the new ones. Um, but people really love them. So then around 81, 82, Coleco, a uh, toy manufacturer, toy company, came to Xavier and said, we want to mass produce your dolls. So this is what they came up with. And these are the original two. This one is not my original because she was stolen from my... Uh, apartment complex years ago when I was little but this is what she looked like this was my original and when these were mass produced there was a craze and everybody wanted one I was lucky enough to get one I'll tell you in a second how I got one um, but this is what the original mass produced looked like um, and just to we'll do signatures in a second um, but the craze was people were fighting over them in Toys R Us um, and it was very hard to get one by Christmas so, what happened was, because they were such, they were so hard to get, they contracted out with different factories to make them because there was such demand. So when you identify a Cabbage Patch Kid, serious collectors, what they'll do, and I'll, I'll use Harry here because Harry, she has little booties. So Harry here, his shoes, now the doll will actually come, and I'll take him off the stand. So the doll will actually come with a tag on its body. Let's see if Harry still has this tag. And the tag, and let me see, I can't see. Um, so the tag will have his factory on it. You can use a magnifying glass. This is a, this is really old. This was actually my first, um, and I'll show you the tag, where the tag is. It's on the side of the body. So this was my original first doll. This was the original, but she's not my original because I said she was stolen. So this is the tag. And the tags will have a, a code on it. It'll at least either say KT or OK. So what you want to do if you're a real serious collector is you want to match the body tag with the clothes and the shoes because that means it came from the same factory. So if I can see, the, the tag will also be, the signature will also be inside the shoe. And this one says, and I can't read it because of the light, I believe this is KT. I need, I need a magnifying glass. But I believe, well, let's pretend this says KT. So this is gonna say KT on the inside of the shoe. Inside, the, there's a little circle around it. So you'll be able to see that. And then you'll also let, be able to see um, on the clothes, there's also, there should be some tags on the clothes that'll say KT as well. Um, and then you can just match up uh, your doll to the factory. So that's how you identify factory codes. So also, I'm gonna keep the stand up here. So also, back in 84, 83 and 84, these original dolls came with 
They did not have strings. And this is stuck to his arm. I don't know. That's actually, you should not do that. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Um, ooh, that didn't work very well. So originally, the two years, the dolls came with rubber bands. So the way you can tell if your doll is original from 83 or 84, and the tag will have a rubber band rather than a white string, which all the rest of these come with. Um, also, identifying tags. Now, in 83 and 84, obviously, they all came with tags. And I actually, I'm going to show you. So these are the original tags. Now, the tags all had a legend on the back. When Coleco uh, or or created these, they all had a legend. And it was made up. And it was about a boy who found this cabbage patch and the, these babies, and they didn't have family, so he adopted them. That's pretty much the legend of the Cabbage Patch. It's a little, um, we'll save time. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the legend. So that was 83 and 84. I got my doll, my original. She was, got, I got her at Christmas time, um, and I got her because a neighbor of mine had I'm sorry, a friend of mine had a neighbor who worked at the old Caldor department store. And they got a shipment the day before Christmas, and the neighbor called the friend of ours and said, does Amy want one? I was five at the time. So they were like, does Amy want one? And my mom was like, yeah. So that's how I got my Cabbage Patch Kid. A lot of other kids got their Cabbage Patch Kids by their parents beating each other up, or a friend of mine, Kelly, got hers. Um, she's my friend on Facebook. She got hers during the summer. Um, they bought one down in Martha's Vineyard during the summer. So there were different ways, but not a lot of kids got them the first year. I was just lucky enough. So the tags. So then we'll get, we'll take Paul here. Paul is from 85, his glasses, his glasses are broken. But in eight, 1985, they still had the same hands. So, see, you can tell the different hands. The hands are a little different. He might be from a different factory. So Paul's, Paul's glasses fell off, didn't it? <laughs> so Paul, in 85, they started making them with different different accessories. They weren't just the plain Cabbage Patch Kids. They were different accessories. So Paul here came with glasses, um, which I left on the bus. I had to buy them again. Um, but they were still, they still had the regular hands. Now, they all, what they also did in 85, after, after the originals were, they, um, I'll take an example. I have two examples here. So they actually increase the size of the tag. So the way you can tell, especially on um, on eBay, if you wanna buy a tag, one is bigger than the other. I, sh I didn't get my uh, measuring tape, but but you'll, you'll be able to measure them. And I, I, I will give you the measurements on my written blog and also um, so you can know the measurements. So if you can see, this tag is, sl and I say slightly, slightly bigger than the original. So this is about two by three inches, and then this is about two by two. So they increased it by an inch. Um, so what you'll do is if you, if you see a tag online, you know, just ask the eBay seller um, how big it is, and then you can tell. So that's a good way of telling um, how big it is. So this is Paul. Paul had glasses, which I think fell off again. Um, here's Paul's glasses. So they made them with glasses um, and different things. That's Paul. Then, in 85, also, they also came out with, you were able to hold them. And how they did this, hold things in their hands, and how they did this was they put a piece of plastic in the thumb. So, and they also gave them teeth. Some of them had teeth. Um, so you could hold a crayon, some came with a toothbrush. This is Mavis. She came with a crayon. Um, so that, they did that. I'll put her tag on later. Let's see, get her tag back on. Let's see. Tag back on. Some of these strings are stretched out, so it's hard. They will fall off. Um, so that's Mavis. So that wasn't enough. So then in 85 again, they also created Kusas. Now Kusas, I don't know the story of the Kusas, but they, apparently they were animals. They were Cabbage Patch Kids, but they looked like animals. And Kusas you could still adopt, but what you did was you actually, instead of 
because all the Cabbage Patch Kids from the originals on up all came with identifying names and a birthday. And all of their birthdays started on the first of the month. So she could have been born, born November 1st, December 1st, um, but they all came with original names. The other thing too I want to mention is you cannot identify like a, I don't know, like Barbie, Mattel creates a Barbie with a specific outfit and look. And they manufacture that Barbie and they sell that Barbie, they market that Barbie, but Cabbage Patch Kids didn't do that. So they picked about five or six outfits and five or six head mold, two, two head molds and different hair and they mixed them up. So you're not going to find a specific, and they all had different names. So you're not going to find specific dolls. So you're going to have to kind of just take your doll as she is unless she's in the box. Um, but, but the difference with the Kusas though was you can actually name the Kusa. So I lost the tag, but this guy's this guy has a different name because I bought this tag on eBay. But this guy was named Kooky. I don't know why, but I named him Kooky. So that's that's the Kusas. Um, so then in '86 or still in '85, in 86, excuse me, '85, they came up with the All Stars. Now the All Stars only had a few teams. There was the Red Sox. I think there was the Orioles, uh, the Yankees. This is an all-star. Now, an all-star is has a lot of pieces. I'm still missing a few. Um, this is not his card, but this is a different team. This is the, um, I believe this is the, this is the Atlanta Braves. So, he came with a baseball card. This is what the card would look like. Obviously, a tag. He came with his hat, and he also came with a pennant, um, which is very, very hard to find. He also had the plastic in his finger so he could hold his pennant. Now, I will show you, this is his, this is how the original, um, the original uh, adoption papers came. And I'll just show you an example of how. So, um, this is his, these are some advertisements which I keep in, and the certificate would be like this. So this would be the certificate. Avery Jonah, that's the significant name. But this guy's name was Tommy. Um, so this was, this is how the adoption went. And you would fill this out. You'd fill this out. They also had footprints on the back. And he was born, well, supposedly he was born on September 1st. So you'd fill this out, and then you would send it to Babyland General in this, this envelope. And it would give you instructions on the back. And it would go to Georgia at the Babyland General and they would process it, and then they would send you a certificate. They would send you a birth certificate, and it would look like this. This would be it, and you would get this in the mail. And you also, if you don't know, if you don't remember, um, you would also get a birthday card every, once a year for their birthday. So uh, if you were born on September 1st, the next year on September 1st, you'd actually get a birthday card for your doll with his name on it so that was the that was the all-stars then people kind of got sick of the yarn hair it was hard to work with you couldn't brush it like a barbie so then they came out with the corn silk kid and this is not my original this was bought online because my original was in a bag that was lost um so this is the corn silk kid and she also had the plastic in her thumb and she came with the brush she could hold and you could brush her hair and they were also modernized so they had an, an 80s vibe so they had bright colors and shapes they weren't the same um outfits so they came with different outfits the shoes also became different they were kind of like these high top Reeboks which were really cool at the time um they also came with a bag of hair ribbons so that was the corn silk So then, that was 1986, then they came out with what everybody was doing at the time, which was talking dolls. And this is a talking doll. This is a Cabbage Patch Kid talking doll. I do not remember her name, but I believe I got her on Christmas of 87. She does not talk anymore. I cannot fi have, find a place to fix her. I'd like to eventually fix her. But she talks, and she came with a cup that she doesn't have the the same hands she does for some reason they did not make the hands like um that she could uh 
Because what you would do is you would put the cup up to her mouth, and her mouth would move, and she would go, and she would make a drinking sound from the cup. I don't have the cup yet, um, but this was, she also came with patent leather, I don't know if they're real patent leather, but patent leather shoes that she could wear, and they're pretty hard to find, so I'm trying to find those too as well. So that is the talking kid. I wish I could make her talk, but she is not working. Then, in the late, probably 80, 87 again, I think. So then they came up with different outfits. They tried to make the original again. And if you notice, the, um, the All Stars, the Corn Silk, they all had, they came with tongues. They had this like tongue thing that came out of the side. So this is 87, and this is toward the end of the agreement with Coleco, and I'll tell you that in a second, because it'll, it'll end in a year or two. But Coleco wanted to go back to the original dolls. Um, so they made new outfits for the dolls, and they, were, they tried to go back to the originals as much as possible. So this is Margaret, and she's not really very special. She's just a doll with the dress and shoes, and she doesn't come with anything to hold. She doesn't come with anything to hold. She was just the plain doll. So that's Margaret. Then in 1987, they came up with this. This is a toddler. And a toddler is probably half the size of a Cabbage Patch Kid. Now, they did have 14 inch dolls back in the day. They were called preemies. Whoops, there she goes. Preemies did not, preemies were half the size. But they, were, they came either completely bald, and they came in a blanket, or a baby, kind of a baby uh, outfit, or they had a little tuft of hair. So those were supposed to be preemies. These were supposed to be right below the age of the Cabbage Patch Kids, so maybe two years old or three years old. Um, so this is a, this is a, um, a toddler. And I haven't mentioned the colors yet. Uh, yet. So the colors go... Um, so the colors go, 84 would be green, and there's a, there's a, I'll send you a link, I'll put, you, I'll put a link on my website and on the YouTube page where um, I'll lay, I'll lay them on the colors. But uh, the colors are green, blue, aqua, black, um, and I'll, I'll reference that if you want to check that out. Um, the signatures are on their butts, so I will, um, the butt here, here, we'll, we'll do that. So her butt signature, and she comes with an original diaper. So her butt signature is lavender. Now, something strange happened. So this was a little strange because every year Coleco and Appalachian Artworks would put out a new doll um, with something different. This is the only Cabbage Patch Kid that I know of that lasted for three years. <coughs> and the reason is, is because these came out in 87. They continue to come out in 88, and the ones in 88 have a different signature. I'd have a different color on their signature. Um, so, and I will show the signature right now. And her signature is lavender. And it, some of them also have the year. Some of them don't. Um, so, in the beginning, I don't believe they had the year. And then starting in 85, they started putting the year on the signature for a little easier identity. Um, but, so she has a lavender signature. And um, so what happened was they made these toddlers in 87. They continued to make them in 88. Then in 89, Hasbro came out, came, uh, took over for Appalachian Artworks, sold them, sold, Coleco sold to Hasbro. So you're going to find these with three different years. You're going to find 87, 88, and 89. Um, so you're going to have to kind of look at the signature on the back. Um, to figure out what, where these came from. Because some of them are Coleco, and some of them are Hasbro. Now, let me go over the colors again. We can go over the colors. So, it's green is 84. Cheat sheet here. So, green is 84. Then it goes blue is 85. Uh, 86, I don't know, but I'll put a reference up. Aqua was 87. 88 was lavender, which is the toddler's. So those are the colors. Um, so you can also um, let's see. So then that was pretty much. This is the last one I ever bought uh, because I was older then. I was almost 12 years old, and I was getting out of my Cabbage Patch stage. And I did love them, 
but they weren't the same after this. Um, they kind of went to a more plastic, like a smaller head. Uh, they didn't look like the originals. This is the most original you're going to get. Um, so then, years later, they came out with some anniversary editions. So, and some of them looked similar to the originals, and some of them didn't. So, the closest ones that I think that come to the originals is this one. This is a this is a 15th anniversary Cabbage Patch Kid, and her tag will say 15 on there. This is as probably as close to the original. Her now I also forgot to mention when you got the Cabbage Patch Kid, it also smelled like baby powder. So when this came in the box for Christmas when I was in college in 1998, she smelled like baby powder. The only thing that makes this different and not authentic like the originals are her shoes her shoes are a very shiny plastic which if you can see this plastic is not shiny at all it's very rough um, it's got like almost like a texture to it and it doesn't have the stripes um, so that's the only problem I have with the 15th anniversary but she still was great because she really did like look like the original they really kept the original face the original hair um, the original design of the doll then this is the 25th anniversary of the Cabbage Patch Kid. And this is probably, next to the 15th, this is the most authentic. Because they really did a great job with this. Because these are the original faces, the original hair. The, the tag is doubled. So it does, these were made by Jack's, uh, Jack Specific, which is another toy company. Um, and these shoes are so original. These look like the original... These actually look more like a preemie shoe, but this looks like the original shoe that they that they came um, they came with, and they were really good. She also came because it was the 25th anniversary. She came with a silver spoon. Um, so those are the Cabbage Patch Kids. Now I'm going to explain how I clean them, how to care for them. Um, so what I do, especially because some of these are just so old, um, they've they've got stains on them. They really were played with really well. So what I do. Um, what you want to do and you're seeing some they do get stains on them even if you don't play with them They're they're old and they will get some stains because of the fabric So what you want to do is you want to just spray them with the fabric cleaner And you want to just throw them in the wash and just spray it and kind of at the spot Also for their faces a lot of them had like marks on them You know you you drew on them or you you know put makeup on them So what you want to use I love magic erasers magic erasers by mr. Clean are great those are great for cleaning the faces. So that's why all my cabbage look patch looks so cabbage patch kids look so clean. Um, you also want to, and I I do this because just to uh, I would use these Avery um, or Staples brand folders, these plastic folders. These keep your certificates uh, really nicely crisp. They also protect them. They should they're I believe they're acid free. Um, so you want to keep your certificates in here. Um, sometimes also the tags are kind of bent. Um, you could probably find like a little baggie to put them in, like a little plastic bag to put them in. But this is what I keep um, all of my certificates in. Um, uh, also, if you want more references, there's a great, um, these are some great books. If you're looking for different outfits uh, to match your Cabbage Patch Kids, this is the 1980s version and this is by Jan. Lindenberger, and this is this is a great reference for uh, Cabbage Patch Kids. These are it has all the original outfits in it. Um, you can see here. I'll show you some. So, so let's go back. So yeah. So eighty three to eighty five. These are some of the original outfits. Um, and then she also made. Did you get a good shot of that? So then she also made a one for 1990s and collectibles. These are all collectibles. Um, it'll show you all the puzzles. It'll all show puzzles and things. There is another 1990s book by Jan Lindenberger. Um, I could not find that. It is in my basement. I could not find that yesterday. But it's, it's the same book. It's the same book, just a different edition. And it's by Jan Lindenberger. And I will put her name on my blog if you want to, um, if you don't remember that. So this is all the furniture, I believe, and all the the different ta uh, tags. Um, this is a great reference as well. And this is um, this is called Cabbage Patch Kid Collectibles. So that's that. 
Um, so that's the end. And if you want to subscribe to my blog, go ahead. I would really appreciate it. Um, like I said many times in the video, I will be putting up uh, some links to references um, in case you miss anything. Okay. Have a good day. Thanks. Happy Tuesday. Hi guys, it's Amy. So I have a little update. I actually got my Cabbage Patch Kid talking kid to talk. So I'm going to show you how she talks. I'm going to show you how to turn her on. So she takes three, four AA batteries and a D cell battery. Um, she has a little on and off switch back here. Um, she, it, I did have to take this out and kind of play with the button a little bit, but she will talk. Um, so I had to cut her little butt down here, um, but I can sew that up. So you just hit the on switch. And you're just gonna press her belly button, which is kind of creepy because you gotta lift a dress up. So, <laughs> so if you press her, you'll hear kind of a click in her stomach, and then she'll eventually start. Come on, there she goes. Don't do that. See, so she's talking. She can get a little annoying, um, but she's working, which I'm really happy about uh, because. On the oh, the cat just jumped up on the table. Um, so yeah, so she's. She, I'm glad because I haven't had her talk for for like 30 oh, years. Mama. So she. Hey, so she kind of gets a little annoying. Um, and like I said before, she has a cup that you can put against her mouth, and she will make a uh, like oh, a Mama. sipping noise. But hey. yeah, she's like the other hey, creepy. Uh, Creepy talking dolls, and she, like I said, she gets a little annoying. Oh, here comes Gizmer. Gizmer loves her. Give her a kiss, Gizmer. This is my cat, Gizmer. Um, really afraid of her. But yeah, I'm gonna shut her off now. So, like I said, it's 1987, and this is the talking cabbage patch kid. So, thanks. Happy Toy Tuesday.